I mean, yeah, I think it'll be a good base. It's hopefully it doesn't vibrate itself apart. Hey guys, what's up? Mike back with another video. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching my videos. I greatly appreciate it. It is a beautiful day here in Texas. And today's finally the day. We're gonna keep working on our diesel generator project. So as it sits now, I need to strip everything down. We're gonna clean the frame up, mount it to this cart, throw some paint on it and yeah just kind of go from there so once i get all that done we're going to come back to this thing i'm going to cut this wire up we're going to add both rectifiers and we're going to start doing some more testing i also bought some more fuel because i got to top the fuel tank up so we're going to top it up with fuel like i said clean the frame up and that's it so i'm going to get this thing rolled over to the garage right now and i'm just going to kind of do a little bit of work show y'all do a little bit of work show y'all kind of process and see how you guys like it so that's it we're going to get over to the garage and get this thing taken apart yeah i definitely think having this thing on the cart is awesome because this thing is super freaking heavy so Go ahead and pull some tools out, get everything put uh, stripped down, and get it rolling. I definitely like this cart. That is going to be an awesome addition to the generator project. Okay, and that's it. This thing's completely taken apart. Just a small pile of hardware. It's kind of funny how simple this thing is. I mean, I know I don't have all the wiring stuff here as well, but pretty simple. The frame's actually very heavy, so I'm going to go ahead and get these cut, these little ears cut down, weld up some more spots, and then hit it with a flap disc or a wire wheel to clean all the rust off, hit it with some paint, and she's going to be looking good. And then same for the arms on the actual generator part of the head. I'm also going to clean these arms up. Same thing, kind of flap disc them a little bit, sand them, add some weld where I think it needs to be reinforced a little bit, and then just make it look a lot better. And yeah, kind of go from there. All right, I'm gonna switch to a wire brush. I got all the big rust knocked off, so now we're gonna use a wire brush to get the rest. Wire brush, yeah. Wire rust, wire brush, something like that. All right, that's a lot of grinding on camera, so it's actually coming out pretty good. I'm very happy that I kind of overbuilt the base of this. You know, especially being a diesel, it's gonna have a lot of vibration, and this thing's pretty heavy duty, so I'm gonna keep cleaning it up off camera, and I don't wanna bore you guys too much with a bunch of grinding, and then I'll show you all the results. Okay, the frame's pretty well rust-free cleaned up, at least all the big stuff. Now I'm gonna pull the MIG welder out. We're gonna MIG weld a few joints up and then throw some paint on it, I guess. It should be good, right? Okay, so we're outside in my outdoor paint booth, AKA just the backyard. I have this color here, this is Caterpillar Yellow. I think it'd look really sick, but these cans are almost empty, so I'm just gonna do my best with these two, and then if I have to go to Tractor Supply and get a new one, I will. So yeah, we're gonna get this thing just sprayed down as good as we can. I guess I'll set you guys up somewhere so y'all can watch. And I get over straight on my GoPro. <laughs> Alright, hopefully that's good enough. Tip's clogged. Oh no. Don't judge my painting skills, I'm not very good at this. <laughs> Literally blowing right in the go. That's blowing right on me. Okay, y'all get the gist. I'm gonna put this down so I don't get over spray all over my camera and I'll show y'all when I'm done. All right, I can already tell what you guys are thinking. It looks so good, I should enter some sort of painting contest, but more keeps me busy, so I won't be able to do that anytime soon, but I think it came out pretty good. So we're gonna get back to the garage and keep messing with the alternator side of things. So this is kind of the best I could do with what I had, and I think it looks all right. It looks better than not being painted. All right, did end up getting the little arms on the 
generator head painted up. So we're gonna let that dry. We're gonna let the generator frame dry itself. Then we're gonna reassemble everything back in the garage. And then we're gonna start messing with the wiring some more and actually start doing some more testing with this thing. I have a fresh gallon of diesel because the tank is almost empty. And then once we do some base testing with diesel fuel, then we're gonna start trying alternative fuels. I don't know if I'm gonna do it in this specific video, but we are gonna at least run it on diesel. Try different things electrically wise. I have a charge controller I wanna test out and just kind of see where that leads. So as soon as the frame and everything's done, like I said, we're gonna reassemble it and go play with it in the backyard some more. All right, guys, I got the frame all done. It looks pretty good. It could definitely use a little more paint, but I'm not worried about it. So next we're gonna get the engine and the generator head, which I have outside. Get all this bolted back down. Once I get to that spot, then we're gonna start doing the wiring. So I'll catch you guys back up once I get everything kind of bolted back down how it was before. And then I do need to secure this to the cart itself. So I think I need to drill some holes, put some bolts through that just to get that secure and then we should be good to go. So yeah, I'm gonna keep, uh, keep on working. Oh yeah, this thing looks good. I am super happy about that. Damn, that looks good. I am so happy how good this thing came out. You know, it's a 10 foot paint job, but you know, it's fine. But still gotta bolt it down to the cart, but everything's tight. I went ahead and zip tied the wires up here and then now I'm going to start working on this getting the rectifiers hooked up. I'm going to probably put a piece of wood here to mount the rectifiers to, mount the heat sinks for the rectifiers, mount the current shunt and then my goal is to just have two wires coming out and then we can hook that up to whatever we want. Charge controllers, straights of batteries, you know all that good stuff. So I think once I get the wiring cleaned up I'll show you guys once I'm done with that. But what do y'all think? So far so good? Pretty cool. All right, next we're gonna go ahead and rewire the generator head to use both sets of coils. So we already tested one. So we're gonna hook one up to this. We're gonna hook the other one up to the other rectifier. I did go ahead and mount both rectifiers on this aluminum heat sink. I did not use bolts because I just didn't have anything to do it with. So I put some thermal compound and zip ties. So we're gonna run that just for now. So I already have leads on this one. I need to cut these, add leads, and get this thing running and kind of see what it does. All right, got these crimped out in there. Looking uh, all right, I guess. And somebody was asking me in the last video what crimper I use. This is the Central Hydraulics one from Harbor Freight. And I've had this for a few years now and it works really well. It look, kind of looks like all the other Chinese hydraulic crimpers you can get on like Amazon and stuff, but this is the way to go. So anyways, got those crimped on there. So we're gonna go ahead and get it mounted to the rectifier block. All right, so the rectifiers are wired up. Now I'm gonna go ahead and start the engine and just to see how bad it actually shakes on the cart because I've never actually started it on the cart. So we're gonna fire it up for a second, just kind of see how it does. I have the base zip tied to the cart right now because I don't have the bolts to drill the holes into the cart yet. So we're just gonna try it like this just for testing purposes and see how well it'll work. If it works good enough just for testing, then I'm okay with that, you know, just so we can get some data out of this generator, power some stuff. Bad. I think we're good with that. Cool. That'll work perfect. So. Wow, that actually worked very, very well. I'm actually really impressed by that. Literally just zip ties, you guys. Man, I love it. And I know I should put bolts. We will do that eventually. But now we need to get the current shut and everything hooked up. I probably got to top it up with fuel. I'm just still using diesel for right now until it's all done. Then we can try some alternative fuels. But I'm going to throw a little extra diesel in there. I did go and get a gas can of that. So. Then we're going to connect it, like I said, connect the outputs and start doing some output testing and actually do some long-term testing with it. how loud it is with it running in the backyard not terribly loud obviously this thing's dead silent so that's nice 
All right, guys, so I'm actually here recording this on my iPhone. I was finishing editing the video on this, and then I realized that when I was explaining how I'm going to wire it, it got really confusing really fast. So I decided just to retest it off camera just to kind of do a sanity check and make sure what I'm doing is actually working. So what I discovered off camera is these two in parallel add the amperage together. So if one of these produces about six to eight amps, when I add this one, I get over 10. So there is some paralleling effect. When I do add this, the RPM of the engine is dropping a little bit because of the load. So the total amperage would actually be higher if I maintain the engine RPM a little bit better. But the point I'm getting at is I'm going to just end up wiring these in parallel. I think in parallel, they're gonna have a little bit smoother output as well because you do have two coils going at once. So that's gonna be the final configuration of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all cleaned up, get these paralleled up and then have one output. And then we're gonna run that output obviously between this and your load, you wanna have a fuse, you wanna have a disconnect switch and you wanna have a display so you can see your exact voltage and amperage. So we're gonna have all that, a little bit of safety. All right, so the output is pretty much done. I know this isn't very neat, but this is good just for now. This is our output coming to this Anderson plug and then I have some terminals right there. Uh, I, if I was going to do this permanently, I would wrap these in something, but this is just for testing. So no, don't worry about it too much. I'm just going to, there, you know, there's no way they're going to touch. So that's how those go. And they go into our charge controller right here. So I'm going to go ahead and run the engine. We're going to get it up to RPM and then we're going to see how much Watts we can get out of it through the charge controller. And I do plan on running this through the charge controller for some instances. And then another way we're going to do this is I'm going to attach it directly to the 40 volt battery because the voltage is so close to it. I'm going to hook it directly to it. And as long as you monitor it, it should be fine. I don't recommend you doing that. Do it at your own risk. Obviously, only do that if you know what you're doing. So that's it just for testing, just to try this thing out. So I got it hooked up to this. I'm going to go ahead and start it. And then I'm going to show you guys the display. I'm not going to do much talking while it's running because it's so loud. You won't be able to hear me. So, yeah. Okay, so what you just saw was the engine running at like a medium speed, a high speed, and a lower speed. And even at full throttle, it didn't really produce, you know, more than 650 about, you know, 650 seemed to be about the continuous load. Now, obviously, that's dependent on what the charge controller is wanting to do. I think if I hook this directly to the battery, I can probably squeeze a little bit more due to the voltage difference I will get. But just through the charge controller, I mean, about 650, it peaked about 700 there for a second. It is kind of all over the place. And that's more than likely because the output of this is probably pretty dirty. I mean, you got to think this is on a single cylinder engine that's, you know, shaking pretty good. So I think that does affect the output. I'm sure if I put a oscilloscope on the output of this, it's not going to be very clean, you know. So that's just to be expected. But anyways, it was very interesting because when I idled the engine down almost to an idle, we were still making 500 watts. So that may be good for fuel economy. You know, the slower you run the engine, in theory, you're going to make a little less power, but it should use a lot less fuel. So that's kind of one of those things we're going to have to play with and see you know, what RPM band is this thing the most efficient? Normally diesels are more efficient down low because they can make more torque. So it'd be nice because you can run this thing just barely above an idle. You're only gonna make 500 watts, but you're gonna be able to do that for a very long time on a small amount of fuel or use biofuel and then it's, you know, dang near free. So just something to keep in mind. But anyways, that's gonna do it for right now. Now we're gonna connect this directly to a battery and see what it'll do from there. The limiting factor is gonna be hardware. So I'll have to keep an eye on everything a lot more. There's no real safeties in place. So keep that in mind. Well, guys, I think that's going to do it for this video, for this series of messing with this. I think I'm going to call this done for now. In the future, we're going to make more changes. We're going to try different fuels out. But just for this video, it's already getting kind of long. I'm going to cut it here. So let me know what else y'all want to see out of this. I have actually another engine I bought. So we're going to be doing an unboxing and testing on that engine. It's also another diesel. So look forward to that video coming out here soon. And that's it. I mean, as I keep coming up with ideas and stuff we can do with this, we're going to keep making videos about it. So let me know what you guys want to see. Let me know what you guys think. 
Let me know if this would work for your setup. If you were off grid, would you use this to charge your batteries? Do you think it would work? And let me know what improvements we can make because I definitely like hearing you guys' ideas. So that's going to do it, guys. See y'all in the next one. Thank you very much for watching. I love all of you, and we'll see you later.